All right, so I have been asked about adventure, specifically which one of my little trips has left the greatest mark on me. Darlings, I will admit that that really does matter what sort of mark you mean. I mean, if you're talking physical, then, well, I know my superlatives very well. There was the bar fight in Texas, longest, that really unfortunate incident in Rio, Alan Quartermain's fault, also deepest wound. Um, and then the day I wished Bonnie into existence, my dearest friend, that one nearly killed me, but it let me have Bonnie, so I can't regret it. Mm. But no, I don't think any of that. And I don't think any of the recent stories that are a little bit upsetting. I mean, I have decided I am no longer going to settle for any kind of nonsense in my personal life. And so, no more blackmail. No more vampires, that's for certain. I shan't be drinking anything that bends my will to anyone else's. Oh, no more old world conservatism. I don't think I'll be seeing my parents for a very long time. And while I regret it a touch, and I miss my old stomping grounds in Manhattan, Let me say things like someday I will marry and it will be a woman. Still adjusting to saying things like that out loud. Hell of a mark. I'm very proud of it. But no, I don't think that that was the greatest uh, mark. Not recently. The recent past stretches a few years back, yes? It was not long after I'd gotten here. And I took a bunch of kids home. Uh, to a bunch of young Ishu to the homeland so that they could choose whether they wanted to be part of the Sealy or the Unsealy courts. And usually those things go very smoothly. I'm reasonably well known there, after all. They call me Captain Doyle there, since that's my old name, but you know, Church Air Dot at least has its good reputation. I'm a trader, and I found some of my best objects. This time, I didn't get to go to a single party before the elders summarily summoned me. They brought me in front of them and they told me seven truths. And one through six were for me. None of your business. Seven. Now that's the mark. See, what they told me was that all things had passed through my hands, all great artifacts. In one lifetime or another, I had handled all of it. The mantle of the queen, the cup of the jack, the sword of the king, the stone of the kingdom. And I own the mirror of the scribe now, and the armor of the fool for that matter. But what was important was that there was one old artifact that I had never laid my hands on. That artifact being the cask of winter. It is a harbinger for the end of now and the beginning of another time. It is the tower or the devil, if you're to row inclined. It is a remarkable artifact of remarkable power. And that I would find it in this lifetime. And it would mean the end of all things. Now that leaves a mark on a girl, wouldn't you say? I believe in destiny. I am Seely to the core, after all, and I believe it's much more sensible to just grab onto the bull with both hands and let it take you tearing down the lane. Ride the current of the river, be it to an eddy, a waterfall, or a placid lake. Your destiny is your destiny. Enjoy the ride, but don't fight the current. Now I'm being told... Now I'm being told that following my destiny to its logical end could end all things. So I had to adjust my beliefs somewhat. And here's where I've landed on the whole affair. There are a number of truly great prophecies that when fulfilled, it was shown that they were fulfilled to the utmost letter of their truth, but that the people who had written down those letters didn't quite understand what they'd been getting themselves into. I mean, if you want something that most of you dreamers would recall, how about I am no man, 
the Lord of the Rings, hmm? or the CPR in the first season of Buffy. Prophecy is a prophecy, and truth is truth, and the future is the future. That doesn't mean we saw it clearly. So I am hoping that the prophecies around me have some loophole, some little trick that'll get me through. I think I know what it is. I have a suspicion. See, I have a friend named Gage. Well, I should say friend. Baron Gage Ap Skithach. He is a remarkable seer, and he has told me that he has seen that the future has two paths. In path number one, I have the cask. In fact, I am wearing it. In path number two, darkness. Death. Misery. Here's what I think. Here's what I hope. Here's what it would take two bottles of wine for me to ever voice to anyone, normally, even Brian. I think having the cask means the end of all things for me. And I think I'm all right with that. Because if me wearing the cask is the only path on which we can potentially have a happily ever after, but me wearing the cask means that there shall be no happily ever after, then let me, in some strange way, be a, a sin eater. Let me wear the cask and make my sacrifices so that everyone else is fun. And I don't mean to be self-aggrandizing here, I really don't. And I don't necessarily think that I'm protagonist enough in this story that my choices really will bend the whole world. But I certainly think I can affect it. So, when I first heard the news, I watched my fate bend down a path, and for the first time in my life, I fought it. Hearing the second prophecy has brought me back to where I was. Fate is fate. Life is life. The end is the end. The future is the future. We can make the best of all possible versions of that future. And if that version is without me, with darlings, can't say I haven't had an amazing life. So, I'm ready. I never in a million years thought I would say it. I am truly, genuinely ready for anything that comes my way. From death all the way down to the worst of all possible worlds. Survival. So, the cask of winter. Hell of mark, wouldn't you say?